defined by change, by rebirth, by new life. When the doom and gloom of winter blossoms into renewed hope for what lies ahead. And nothing in life better reflects the transition between seasons than the return of baseball. No team underwent a greater overhaul during the offseason than the Seattle Mariners. General Manager Jerry Depoto turned over half of the 40-man roster, breathing fresh life into a franchise aching for a postseason run. And as the seasons turn, so must the Mariners, putting last year's disappointment behind them as they prepare to set sail on their 162-game regular season. We'll watch that selection process develop all March long as the eight months journey to glory begins now. Welcome to the Cactus League on Root Sports. Mariner Spring Training on Root Sports is presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Another sunny day in Arizona as the Mariners get set for Cactus League action against a familiar face. The day after beating the Kansas City Royals, the Mariners battle another playoff team. This one from the National League, the Central, as the Chicago Cubs make their way to Peoria. We make our way inside our brand new set. Hey, everybody, Brad Adam alongside baseball analyst Mr. Bill Kruger. Did Valley leave his place somewhat clean yesterday? I can see a few a few crumbs, crumbs yeah. a few chips. They no look food, like pizza Val. crumbs. Pizza, yeah. Oh, pizza. We'll talk yeah. to him about that. All right, now the Cubs <laughs> in town. They're starting John Lester, the former standout from Bellarmine Prep here in Tacoma, while Seattle counters with their own left-hander in Wade Miley. Miley spent the first four years of his career playing right there in Arizona for the D-backs. He won 38 games and made the All-Star game in 2012. From there, he was traded to Boston. One year in Beantown, he led the Red Sox in wins with 11 before another trade brought him to Seattle. As we take a look at our Lexus pitching matchup, Bill, what can this guy provide for the Mariners in that rotation? Well, he's a left-hander, and you can always covet left-handers. Remember that, Brad. But this guy gives you innings. Almost 200 innings a season for the past four. He's averaged 32, 33 starts a season. He is real consistent. The guy can absolutely spot the baseball. He's not overpowering. 91-mile-an-hour fastball. He can really dot slider, change-up, curveball, cutter. Uh, again, a guy that's going to give the defense someone that's easy to play behind. He's going to pitch the spots. Uh, the defense is going to be able to anticipate this. He's not a guy that's going to overwhelm the competition with big velocity. And now with uh, Mark Burley retiring, he is the new <laughs> fastest pitcher in baseball. Burley, his idol, patterned his game after him, said he rarely turns his back to the catcher. Get the ball, sign, go. Get the ball, go. Just yep. like us. We go. Wade Miley, just one of several new additions, of course, on the Mariners bench this year. Another, it's a big one. How about Scott Service, the new skipper? He's standing by with Dave Sims. You know, Scott, if you got some Broadway chops to go along with your baseball chops, you're thinking of the song Get to Know You from The King and I. And that's been a process. That should be your theme song here with 31 new guys here. Yeah, it really has. You know, things have gone great so far. We spent a lot of time in meetings and in the clubhouse getting to know each other and getting guys to, to loosen up and to open up, you know, and try to create more of a family atmosphere here. And so far, so good. Tell the fans, just give them maybe one or two examples of how you actually do that, what the process is. Yeah, you know, what we've done every morning is try to get a couple of the young players to get up and talk. And I interview them. Basically, you know, where are you from? Where do you live now? You know, what are your hobbies? You know, who's your hero? What's your hardship? What's your highlight? And, you know, we have fun with it. You know, there's some comic relief in there, but we also get an opportunity to get to know each other. And it's really good for the veteran players because a lot of times they don't know the young guys. And, and on the flip side, not interviewing the veteran guys so much as <laughs> having fun with the young guys and, and building uh, from there. Well, it sounds like a good process from talking to the guys that really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I think our coaching staff has as well. And, and again, we're, we're trying to, to make up. We've got so many new players that we've got to kind of do it in a hurry. Spring training looks like it's long. But uh, opening day will be upon us very quickly. And, uh, you know, so far the guys have bought in. Uh, it's been very open. And we've had a lot of fun with some gimmicks and things we've done in the clubhouse as well. We have a, a pool tournament going on right now. So we'll see who ends up being the winner of that. The winner's got to be the skipper. You can't beat him. Thanks, Dave and Scott. Hey, we're counting down to first pitch on Root Sports between the Cubs and Mariners. Wade Miley wears a beard, and he likes to work fast. He's also got 49 wins in his five-year career. He'll take the mound for Mariners Spring Training, presented by Delta Airlines, when we return.
Miley warming up again last year in Boston. 32 starts. He tossed his first career complete game. He's thrown at least 193 innings each of the last four years. I like to call that an innings eater. A guy who works fast, which is very good. Welcome back to Mariners Spring Training, presented by Delta Airlines. So who's going to be facing Miley and John Lester today? The two pitchers. Time for a look at the lineup for the Seattle Mariners, the home team. Aoki leading off, Sardinas, Cano, Romero, Lynn, Sanchez, Smith, Lucas, and Steve Clevenger getting the start behind the dish, catching Mr. Miley. As for the Cubs, an away game, they got to have three or four starters. They do a couple of big names. Schwarber's a good one in left field. Chris Bryant, how about this guy? He hit 274 last year, big home run in the Cactus League last year against Felix. He went on to hit 26, driving 99 and win the NL Rookie of the Year Award. As we get out to Peoria, start of this one, it's Dave and Mike. Well, you got to like the preparations as you get ready for another spring game on a hot afternoon here in Arizona. The hottest team attendance-wise in the Cactus League, the Chicago Cubs. Favorites to get to the World Series, taking on the Seattle Mariners here at the Peoria Sports Complex. We welcome you on this Thursday afternoon to some Cactus League baseball. Dave Sims and Mike Flowers with you in the Root Sports crew. Gorgeous day, big crowd, Cubs in, in town, and they've been setting a record at almost every home game that they've had more than 15,000, and a lot of their fans are tra have traveled over here to Peoria. Good to have you with us as Wade Miley makes his second start of the spring. He is a defender's best friend. He works quickly. Last start, first inning, had him throwing a pitch about every eight seconds. Said the only thing that holds him up is if the catcher's slow or if the batter steps out. Ready to go. Javier Baez, first pitch. In there for a strike. Trip Gibson is the home plate umpire. Backhanded down at third by Ed Lucas. Nice dig by Lind. One down. And a really good play all the way around. Strong arm from Lucas. You can see the short hop. Easy pick for Lind over at first. Young man from Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire, Ivy Leaguer. Here's Kyle Schwarber. They brought some of their big names over here. Schwarber, Chris Bryant, Jorge Soler. Along with John Lester, he'll get the start. Catching up with Joe Madden before the game. And two time manager of the year. Said that Schwarber, yeah, he had those two hiccups defensively in the playoffs. But he's been pretty good out there. He can swing the bat, that's for sure. A lot of Look power. At, at that ball, they've pretty much memorialized it up in, uh, in Wrigley. We'll take a look at that end of July when we go there. Schwerber, 246, 16 homers, 43 runs batted in in 69 games after he was called up. Sends this one to center field. Nori Aoki's there. Two outs. And that'll bring up another one of their young, young buddy, young uh, players, Chris Bright. As we look at Chris Basio, pitching coach, former Mariner. Teammate for several years with you, Mike. You say he's one of the strongest guys you ever played with? Chris, uh, Chris Basio. Basio, yeah, without a doubt. He's he's something else. He was a really good uh, high school football player, but unfortunately, because of that, he ended up with a lot of knee injuries. But Basio, yeah, he's, he's one of the strongest guys that I've ever been around. Good pitcher. Would throw everything up there. National League Rookie of the Year, Chris Bryant, 275, 26 homers, 99 runs batted in. Fly ball, right field routine for Seth Smith and a good inning for Wade Miley. Good to have you with us, everybody. Mariners Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines.
Delta Airlines and a big crowd continuing to file into the sports complex here in Peoria, Arizona. Cubs always a big draw. Mariners playing some good ball. Cubs have lost six in a row. The Mariners come in with a record of four and four and a firm continues to fill up and you're going to see Robinson Cano here in the first inning. We are ready for action. These folks in the shade on this 81 degree day here in Peoria. Aaron is coming off first telecast yesterday it was a 7-4 win over Kansas City split squad. There's Nori Aoki. Nori looking for his second hit of the spring. He's one for 12. John Lester out of Bellarmine Prep in Tacoma. Two-time World Series champion with the Red Sox. 32 years old now. Won 11 and 12 with the 3-3-4 ERA last year with the Cubs. Trip Gibson has balls and strikes today. The umpires will be rotating in the bases. This is spring training. It'll be Adrian Johnson, Mark Ripperger, and Pat Hoberg. One, two to Nori. See a lot of that. He's good at getting the bat on the ball, doesn't strike out. Tough guy to strike out. No, he'll definitely try to put the ball in play, especially with two strikes. Really cuts down his swing. One of the reasons why he's carried a 350 on base percentage while he's been over here in, in the major leagues. Bouncing ball to the shortstop, Negron. And safe. Good hustle down the line. Negron took it for granted. He pays a price. And you can see he gets rid of it. I look at a lot on the throw, but hustling. Aoki stutter stepped a little bit, almost yeah, cost right. him. Yeah. Looking forward to watching him play some center field today. We've seen Martine out there quite a bit, but Aoki's going to play center field this afternoon. There's Luis Sardinius. You want to talk about a hot spring? Seven for 16. Good bunt. Fine execution of the bunt base hit. I was talking to Jose Cruz about that today. And he was raving about learning from Lou Brock and Rod Carew and how effective it is. Casey Candell talking to him about it. That was really well done. That's perfect. You want to bunt it firmly to get it past the pitcher. And then it's kind of in no man's land. No chance for the first baseman to make a play. So a good push bunt. Sardinus. Eighth hit. He's now hit in six of the eight games that he's played in. He's got service got to like that. Here's Robinson Cano. Three away on the spring. One homer. Two runs batted in. Good spot for him. Here with nobody out. Runners at first and second. Ball one to Robbie. Fun watching the guys take their infield drills today. They, they had a whole sequence where they did everybody was doing backhand pickups. There's a lot of extra work down there. Scott Service threw extra BP to the last group. Went to about 12 10 today. Scott doing a really good job getting guys familiar with each other. First time managing anywhere. Good count for Robbie at 2-0. Oh. It's a lot of fun, Dave. You mentioned the guys getting their work in this morning. I was watching their infield, too. and It's a lot of fun to watch that, and you get a real good idea, especially we're fortunate because we can get so close to it, just how good they are. The different throwing angles and the way that they are able to backhand the ball and get rid of it quickly and most of the throws right on the money. A lot of fun to watch. I like that backhand drill, because it, but it builds tremendous confidence, as you know. Might work down the line. Gets foul. The late slice, two and two. Good crowd here at Peoria. Capacity about 12,000. And looking at some of the numbers for the Cubs, as you can see, a lot of Cub fans here. 
They set a record in their first uh, home game against the Angels on the fourth, 15,446 in their new home, or second year home. About 45 minutes east of here. 2 2 pitch to Cano, a little dribbler. Lester will take the underhand flip. Get Cano, runners advance, one out. There's a chance for Stefan Romero to pick up a couple of runs. He too swung the bat quite well this spring. Six for 11, 545 batting average, a homer, and three runs batted in. Came off the bench in yesterday's game and hit the ball hard into left center field to pick up an RBI. So a real good chance for him to get another RBI right here. It looks like the Cubs will keep their infield back. Everybody except for the first baseman, Davis. Davis playing in. This ball for strike. Romero. Playing in left field today. Scott Services, they want to get him more action at first base, as you know, an infielder by trade. He said his future is his bat. Really likes the way he swings. Couldn't check it there. And the count goes 0 and 2. Edgar Martinez, Tim Bogart, Scott Service, some of the brain trust for the Mariners. I had a good conversation with Edgar this morning. He's putting in a lot of hours. It's here early, looks at a lot of tape, and I think the guys start hitting in the cages at around seven for their early work. That is a foul ball. Edgar was telling me that he gets here at the ballpark at about 6.30 every morning. Get the guys going. And he's not the first guy here. here Tim Bogar and uh, Scott Service are 5 5 30 guys. That is seriously early. Wonder if they can stay awake till 8 o'clock at night now. Probably I'm, not. I'm going to go with no. <laughs> oh, and two. Breaking ball up the end of the bat. That is a foul ball. Dude, right off the end, spinning sideways, and just misses the corner of the base. Adrian Johnson, first base umpire at the moment. Great opportunity here for Romero and the Mariners. Deal two pitch. Hooks it into left field. That'll get two. So the Mariners are on the board. Nice job by Stefan Romero digging for two. And he's in safely. Two run double. Noki scores. Sardinia scores. And it's 2 0 Seattle. For Romero, RBI's four and five on the spring. Good two strike hitting. We were talking about Edgar earlier, and I think you have to take a look at the approach. It's a breaking ball. Stride gets down a little bit early, that front foot down a little bit early, but able to keep his hands back. And I think you start talking about approach with two strikes, and it's something that the guys have worked on. I was talking to the manager, Scott Service, about that two strikes. How do you approach it? What, what are you thinking about? And I think right there, if you stay more towards the middle of the field, it'll give you an opportunity to stay on a slow breaking ball like that last one was. Hit it hard in the left field. Here's Adam Lind, had a few days off. And I'm looking for his second hit of the spring, one for seven. Drives it. Deep right center field. Not a glove will touch it. Romero will score Lind with an RBI double three nothing Mariners so Adam Lind with a ringing double off of John Lester and a fine start here for the Mariners Adam aggressive on this fastball up you can see they wanted to go to the outside corner left it about middle in Well over the head of Javier Baez 
terrific start here. Three runs on four hits already with just one out. Brings up Gabby Sanchez. Trying to regain the stroke he showed Florida a few years ago. Went back to back seasons with 19 home runs. Is that a play? So the crowd, which has really been good, Mariner fans are down here, but today with the Cubs, they're fans. Folks from the uh, Midwest, a lot of retirees down here. They follow this ball club since they are the pick to get to the World Series out of the National League. A lot of bright young talent. Got to the playoffs. Here's the ball hit to the shortstop. Lind will get back to second base. Negron throws out. Gabby Sanchez, two away. Bring up Seth Smith on this beautiful day. 82 degrees right now. Before we got here, temperatures were in the 90s in late February. 80s are good. This is perfect. It starts to get a little oppressive when you're talking 90s. Well, I think it's going to touch 90 tomorrow. Mariners will be at the Giants. That'll be another big crowd over there. The Giants draw really well in Scottsdale. Good rip by Seth Smith. Smitty's off to a good start, six for ten. Lester, 2008 Hutch Award winner, came to Seattle. Three-time All-Star, nine years in Boston. Out at second base is Adam Lind. Took a little off of that. 0 and two. This inning certainly exemplifies some of the things that Scott Service and staff want to do. Yeah, as he said the other day, like the three-run homer, but the bunt, an infield hit, a couple of doubles, and three-nothing lead. Well, you're absolutely right. Oki's getting things started with that infield base hit. Was down in the count quickly, 0-2, and put the ball in play. And we just finished talking about it. He was able to beat it out for an infield hit, and then a great bump by Sardina. So top of the order doing what they're supposed to. Something that we've seen a lot of throughout spring training. As we look, as we look forward, move forward. Big time for Marte to start laying down some more bunts too. We've seen Robertson do it. Sean O'Malley. I'd like to see Martin do it. Not in the lineup today, getting right. the day off. But Martin, that's something that was a big part of his game when he first came to the big leagues with the Rangers, 2013, 2014. Amongst the league leaders with bump base hits and infield base hits, so we'd like to see him get back at it too. Joe Madden on the left, Chris Basio on the right. Madden, nine years in Tampa Bay. Well, Madden doesn't want to see his, his pitcher and John Lester throw 25 pitches here in the first inning. Listening in on his media session, and the writers are asking about the the fact that all the yeah. fans are beefing, they want to see more of the front line players. He says, Hey, I'm not risking John Lester on March 10 <laughs> and, and affect him for some time in August, September. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Get out of here. Strikeout victim, Seth Smith, goes down swinging, but a good first inning for the Mariners. Three runs on four hits, no errors, a man left. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines.
for you. Heat them up. Welcome back to PR, everybody. As the Mariners take on the Chicago Cubs. Team they'll see at Wrigley Field will be there July 29, 30, and 31. One of their bright young players, Jorge Soler. Tough spring thus far. 0 for 10, but he had 10 homers in 101 games last year, and he blasts this one. Deep right center field, gone. He's got that kind of strength that we saw from the Sano kid with uh, Minnesota. I had a chance to watch him quite a bit last year. And you're right. You have to love the tools that he has. Runs well. Good arm. And as you just saw, tremendous power. Laser shot. Might see a few more of those today. Wind's blowing straight out to center field. And this is an inside-out swing. They want to get the fastball in on his hands, left it out over the plate as he lined it in to the bank out there in right center field into the berm. So Solaire's first hit of the spring, a big one. Puts the Cubs on the board, 3-1 Mariners. Here's David Ross, the catcher. Three for six on the spring. So, all right, so fan caught the ball and gave it to this youngster. Day's made. That'll boy. Fouled off. He does remind you of the burly pace, doesn't he? He does. Like Zanino said, it's a pleasure to just put put down a sign and it's coming. Be ready. With the foul ball, it was 15 seconds between pitches just a couple seconds ago. This is playable. Aoki. Taking charge. And there's one out. Let's go to Brett Adam at the Ford Sports Desk. Well, Dave, thank you very much. Time for our CenturyLink What's Next, where they look at the pitcher's schedule to follow Wade Miley on the mound. And Miley getting through his second inning there. It's, first, it's going to be Joaquin Benoit, followed by Casey Coleman, lefty Paul Fry. May, may also see Michael Guaype and Blake Parker. Now, Miley expected to go three innings. He's got one out here in the top of the second. Back to Peoria. And Dave and Mike, he is quick. He is, no doubt about it. Here's a drive deep to left center field. Can't get it. That's Romero. And it bounces into the stands for a ground rule double. That's Tilmer Candelario, switch hitter, the DH today. Barreled up a couple of balls here in this first inning. Second inning, big part. We'll take a look at the location again. Trying to go inside, left it out over the plate. Yeah, and that's why you have spring training, Dave. You guys aren't going to be as sharp as you would expect him at the start of the season. And you were mentioning the pace at which he pitches with reminds you a lot of Burley, and it certainly does. But he pitches a lot like Burley as well. Has a better fastball than Mark. But he likes to move it. You can see both sides of the plate. Slider, curveball, changeup. Burley, a lot of cutters into the right-handers. Mm -hmm. Fouled off. Taylor Davis, the first baseman for the Cubbies. New pitching coach, it's Mel Stoudemire on, on the right, right there in the middle. And that's Pete Harnish on the left. Fine right-hander for Baltimore, Houston, Cincinnati, and the Mets during his day out of Fordham University. Longtime friend of Scott's service. And down the line, that will get fouled. Three one lead for the Mariners one out one on a run in here in the top of the second. Cubs big favorites in the National League they play in a tough division as you know last year 97 and 65 they did that with a for a for rents uh, let me try that again frantic finish say that fast 100 times 50 and 25 how about that. In the playoffs for the first time since 08. 
That is fair ball in trouble. Down into the corner. Seth Smith will dig it out there. Doing liners dig it out of the corner drill. Seth gets it back in quickly. And back to back doubles. This one drives in a run. 3 2 Mariners. Taylor Davis with his first RBI of the spring. Well, trying to keep the fastball in again. That one ended up out over the plate. So three extra base hits for the Cubs here in the inning. The home run and then back to back doubles. Tying run at second base. There is Mindy Alcantara, the second baseman. Aoki shading a few steps towards right center. For Alcantara. In the dirt for ball one. Joe Med talking about the expectations for this Cub ball club. He says, can't worry about it. It's all external. We know what we have to do. And they certainly have accepted where they are. And they're excited about what they have. Dexter Fowler coming back again. Good players all around that ball club. Jason Hayward in right. And now Miley behind 2-0. 2-1. Now Gintera, 300 hitter thus far in the spring. Three for 10 with a double and a run batted in. Two one. Hit hard, right center field. Davis coming around third. Aoki will get it back in a second. We got a tied ball game at three three. Alcantara with an RBI, his second. Again, trying to get the cutter in on his hands. That will probably middle him, but a good inside out swing. Hit it the other way. One of the things you'll notice down here in Arizona as the infields are pretty fast. Ball will get through the infield quickly as that one did. You know, it's a 30 second rule for conferences on the mound. Mel's been consistently good in out. They didn't happen to start the clock this time. And home plate umpire Trip Gibson was trying to get somebody to get that 30 second clock working. Christopher Negron, shortstop. They got him picked off. Can they get the out? They do. Sardin is supplying the tag. Sardin, yes, supplying the tag. One, take three, look, six. Yeah, we'll take another look at the tag, and you can see him staying to the inside of the base to give Lind a throwing lane so he didn't hit the runner in the back. So a strong throw from Adam Lind. An easy out. Joe Madden having some words with Trip Gibson. Two outs now. On one. Two no. Finally, last season, hundred ninety plus innings. One more time, boy, that's been a staple for him. 30 pitches now, 21 strikes for Miley. Went 11 and 11 with Boston. One of those wins he beat Felix on a Sunday in Boston. Oh. Straight back. Remembering that game with Wade the other day, and he said, couldn't believe, you know, it was one of those days Felix didn't have it. Gave up a bunch of runs in the first inning, and Miley kept saying to himself, do not blow this lead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure when he was on his way to the ballpark that day, he wasn't expecting to have a lead like that. 
That with Felix on that. It was one of those hiccup games. Felix hit that one, the one in Houston. Remember, first inning, ton of runs. Yeah. I think he had three or four of those throughout the summer. See Felix on Monday. Look forward to that first spring start. And we'll have that for you at 1 o'clock here on Root Sports. Next telecast is Saturday against the Dodgers right here at 740. Count runs full. And that'll be 640 Pacific time. Three two pitch. Nice hop for Lucas. What an inning for the Cubs as they tied up at 3 3 with a four hit inning. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines. Seattle Mariners baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing and buy steel to find your local steel dealer. Visit steeldealers.com as we look at the Peoria Sports Complex. Padres side right below you, right there. There's the stadium where we're broadcasting from right now. 3 3 ball game. Bottom of the second. Ed Lucas, Steve Clevenger. Nori Aoki, 8 9 and 1 for the Mariners. They sent seven men to the plate, three runs, four hits in the first inning. Lucas down the line. That'll be extra bases. Eddie Lucas, his sixth hit, six for 13. And it goes under the pad. It'll be a ground rule double. Already the third double for the Mariners this afternoon, trying to get the cut fastball in on his hands. After starting the spring 0 for 4, he's been another hot hitter for the Mariners. Mariners with a couple of doubles in the first. Romero and Lynn both with doubles. He's got service very high on Lucas. He said he's going to help the ball club in one way or another. Fill a role for us. Very sharp kid. Dartmouth grad. He was doing the, the local report in those morning 9 o'clock meetings. It became a part of the routine here. and A lot of fun. Steve Clevenger looks at ball one. Said Lucas, and I make the big club, but he'll certainly be down at Tacoma. It sharpened up down there. Clevenger so coming over from Baltimore. So he was the anchor of the news report in the yep. morning. Yeah, he was doing. He, <laughs> what did he say? He was doing the uh, doing the local news, and then they had the real tough chore: do the weather. <laughs> Sunny. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Clevenger trying to move him up or score him.
Gave a backup first baseman the catcher with Baltimore last year. At 287, two homers, 15 runs batted in at 30 games. Spent most of his time in Norfolk. 305, four homers and 32 runs batted in. Lester expected to go two today, two innings. His first spring start. 2-2 two -two pitch to Clevenger. Lights it off. Clevenger one base hit thus far. One for six in the spring. Two two pitch. And they get the runner hung up. And a bad throw by Lester. Mariners catch a break. Talked about it yesterday. Boy, balls back to pitchers. They become an absolute adventure. Yeah, and you can see back in the first inning with John Lester as he fields this cleanly. Didn't set his feet, tried to throw it on the run, going back up the mound and bounced it in there. But he underhanded that ball to first back in the first inning, so he, he doesn't like to throw it around the diamond. Excellent pitcher, one of the best in the business, especially for left-handers. Mariners take advantage of that error. First two men aboard as we get back to the top of the order. Nori Aoki, infield hit, start things off. Came around and scored on a Romero double. My ball right field. Solaire's under it. Tagging is Lucas. He bluffs. He holds. Decent throw by Solaire. And one away. Everybody, the time has come to pick up single game tickets to all the games you want to catch this season. Whether big series against the Yankees, Pirates, or Cardinals, the fun events including firework, bobblehead nights. You're in for a great time at the ballpark. Tickets are on sale. Go get them. Get them now at Mariners Team Stores and online at Mariners.com. Here's Sardinius. Great bunt. Push bunt to first base. To the first baseman. Beat him to the bag. Base hit. Young man has been impressive. It's a shortstop today. We continue to get a little taste of center field. Played there yesterday. 7 4 Mariner win over KC. Oh, he drills this. Base hit. Lucas will get the wave on. Here's the throw home. It is off the glove of the catcher. Lucas scores. Everybody else moves up. The throw from Schwerber was a good one, but the catcher, Ross, could not handle it. So Sardinius, two for two, picks up an RBI. And he's making an impression here early in spring training. Solid line drive. I think it was a pretty good throw, but unfortunately, Cody Ross, the catcher, the ball bounced up in the air, and he wanted to get the tag down in time, and because of that, he wasn't able to field it cleanly. Excuse me, David Ross. So E2 allowing the runners to move to second and third. So we got two errors in this inning. Here's Cano up the middle. That'll get a run in, and that's booted by the shortstop Negron. Everybody's safe. Run scored. Another one on the board for the Mariners. So an E6. What an inning. Take it. Scoring on a play is Clevenger. 5 3 lead for the Mariners. Oh, it looked like a routine ground ball right back up the middle. Well, just kicked it right off the heel of his glove. Here's Stefan Romero. Runners at the corners. One out. 
Vai quando? Well, given the problems that we've seen Lester have here so far, so if, if he were to stay in this game, if this is a regular season game, I probably could anticipate even more bunts, right? They can feel the problem. Right, here's one off his glove again. And everybody's going to be safe. Another run scores. Third RBI for Romero. We'll take a look at it right back to Lester. Just handcuffed him with it. Probably an infield hit. Not heard the official score yet, but nonetheless, Mariners. Three runs this inning. 6-3 lead. Here's Adam Lind. RBI double deep right center field. First time up. Base hit to Romero. Drives in a run. 6 3 Mariner lead. A little late. Another good day for Romero. Two for two, already has three RBIs. He is making an impression. Oh, two to land, breaking ball, swing, miss, he chased it. There's two outs for John Lester, strikeout number two. After a couple of fastballs, here's the breaking ball down out of the strike zone. That's exactly where he wanted to throw it. Let's see if Sanchez could get a couple of runners home here with two outs. Strike one. Gabby grounded out the short his first time. No one from Lester fell off. Mariners come in with a record of four and four. Cubbies at one and seven. They've lost six consecutive ball games. Here's the 0-2. Going to take. You can hear the crowd murmuring. That was close. Yeah, Lester was already walking towards the dugout. He thought he had it. Big inning. Mariners capitalizing on three errors here in this frame. Right off the breaking ball. Sanchez broke into the majors with the Florida Marlins back in 08 stayed with them through the 2011 make that 12 season with Rakuten in uh, Japan last year 12 13 14 season with Pittsburgh 2 2 full count Seth Smith is on deck he comes to the to the plate, he'll be the ninth man to face Lester in this inning. Runners will take off. Two outs, 3 2 pitch. And strike three called. So Lester bangs out with a strikeout, but the inning was three runs on three hits, three errors, and two left. Mariners with the lead, 6 3. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines.
That's why they need spring training. Mariners up 6-3. We move to the top of the third inning. Welcome back inside the studio. It's Brad Adam, Bill Kruger with you. We'll get out to Peoria in just a second. We've got Scott Service leading the Mariners in his first spring training as a manager. Joe Madden, his second with the Cubs, but several years in the bigs. How about some of the managers you played for, specifically in spring training? Probably some good, some bad, some really good, like a Tony LaRusso. What was it like? For a hall, you know, playing under a Hall of Fame manager in spring. Well, I didn't really know he was a Hall of Famer at that point, but he was going to make his mark certainly with Oakland. But uh, Larusa liked to get guys together off the field, uh, socialize, uh, try to get to know one another, that kind of thing. Uh, in spring training, he was, uh, I think, unique. He brought a uh, Taekwon Kwon Do expert, Mac Newton, in to uh, take us through stretching and exercise, strength work. He's the guy that helped uh, rehabilitate Bo Jackson. So uh, LaRusso was a little bit ahead of his time. you got to realize this is the 80s now. This isn't uh, today's uh, game, okay? Kind of reminds me a little bit of outside the box, like a Joe Madden, who brings in magicians and DJs and a big, big boa constrictor snake that yeah. I saw in Tampa, which yeah. scared the heck out of me. <laughs> we go out to Peoria and Mike Blowers. I, I, you know... Mike, I, I know the, the story of Lou Pinella, the cow in the office. I remember that one. I don't remember a snake from <laughs> Lou, but he, but he had to be entertaining as well in spring, right? Well, I can tell you, Brad, that with Lou, his first year in 93, which was right here at the complex, the first year we had the complex, still didn't have a stadium, so we played all of our games on the road. And the one thing that was apparent right away, and, and, and Lou obviously did it for good reason. He wanted to change things up, change the culture uh, for the Mariners. He wanted to win. The first game of the spring against San Diego, um, it didn't matter to him. That's all he talked about all spring. We, we, you know, when we're here watching these guys getting their work in now and trying to get ready for the season, that wasn't the way that Lou ran that first spring. I'll never forget it. He wanted to win every single day, play the games that way, um, just to change things up. And it kind of reminded me a lot of Scott's service this year. It's one of the things that Scott told me with the meetings that we've talked about and the different things they're doing that he wanted to change things up a little bit. And I think that sometimes that's a good idea just to change the culture of where the guys are at. But Lou, um, I'll never forget that first spring. It was, I was, I was happy when the season started, that's for sure. Wanted to set the tone early. I like that. All right, Blow. Uh, so, Bill, back to you. Other manager you played under, uh, Tom Kelly, huge name. How about a Sparky Anderson? Well, Tom Kelly, uh, he, was, he had this sort of wry, uh, underscored uh, humor. I got to be the uh, target of that in one of the early stretching uh, sessions where he would basically was calling me out, trying to figure out why in the heck the twins had acquired me because they must have just killed me every time they faced me, and they got a lot of laughs. And he goes, you know, but Kruger's a lot smarter than the rest of you guys because uh, he's now eliminated the one team that really hit him. And so then I felt a lot better about things after that. But uh, I'll tell you what, Tom Kelly, he ran a camp. Very interesting. He started us over in the Meyer League Complex in the old locker rooms where you're hanging your, your pants on a, on a, on a, on a nail. Uh, this is the World Championship Club. And everybody kind of bought in. Par uh, Kirby Puckett and the guys, this was all part of, you know, the rite of passage. When you guys start having, you know, playing well and practicing well, we're going to move over to the stadium. Like that was a big prize. And I'll tell you what, we did accelerate an infield. Of course, I didn't, but we did accelerate an infield every day. It had to be perfect or they weren't getting off the field. The Twins were the most organized, hardest working group I ever was with. That's why they overachieved and did well year after year with Tom Kelly and you guys. All right, let's get back to Peoria. Two outs here in the third and rejoin David Mike. All right, Brett, thank you. Thank you to Bill as well. Chris Bryant, the hitter, 0 for 1, fly to right in his first at bat. Out back off the glove of a fan to our right. Some lineup they're going to have with Bryant, Schwarber, Soler to work him in. Hayward, Dexter, Fowler. On low. Felix Hernandez, the blonded goatee. Looking forward to seeing him on the mound. Yeah. Be out there on Monday. Here we'll have a at the telecast for you. Bryant backed off the plate. Let's see him get 20 wins this year. At 19, he's at 18. That and also get to the playoffs. Even more important. Fly ball left field. 
Fighting the son Romero wins the battle and that'll do it. Cubs are going one, two, three. There's a look at the flags of all the teams in the Cactus League as we remind you that Mariner Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines. Trust me. I don't know if I'd get up on the top of it. That guy's watching. I don't need to get that high up. But nonetheless, that is, <laughs> that is a spectacle. I can promise you I won't go up there. Yeah, neither, we're, in the, we're in the same page. That, those kind of, <laughs> hey, it's good to see. You want to do it? Go for it, pal. Good to have you with us as the Mariners take on the Chicago Cubs. I mean, the expanse of that Grand Canyon is not to be believed, no matter how many times you see it. New pitcher for the Cubs, Ryan Williams. Seth Smith, the hitter. Seth 0 for 1, struck out in a 2-2 pitch. John Enderoli's in left field for the Cubs. Oh, and two, Seth Smith. Right on cue, Seth Smith, base hit, two strike hitting. He's got service complimenting him. He says he fits perfectly into what we want to do here in terms of being a really good on base percentage guy. I think that we've had a real good example of it today in all the at-bats up and down the lineup as you take a look at the inside out swing by Seth. But these guys are, are battling in all these at-bats, especially when they get behind and something that I've noticed a handful of games that I've seen here early in spring training. Strike one Ed Lucas, ground rule double. And the left field line, first time up, scored a run. Paints the outside corner. Oh, and two double play depth for the infield pitch outside with the breaking ball. Swing and a miss. Strikeout for Williams. One down, one on. Here in the bottom of the third inning. Make sure you join us this summer. 
for what will be one of the biggest events in Mariners history when Hall of Famer Ken Griffey Jr. gets his number retired. You can guarantee yourself a seat for this can't-miss event when you purchase a 20-game plan or 10-game flex pack. So go to Mariners.com slash Griffey for more information. Steve Glevinger fouling one off. Clevenger reached on a fielder's choice in his first play appearance back in the second inning, came around and scored. Joaquin Benoit getting loose, so he'll be next up. Slipped out of his hands. Two and one. We had Benoit in the Cactus League report this past Monday, and he was a lot of fun. Interesting guy. Veteran, been around for a long time. I'm sure he's helping out a lot of the kids in spring training this year. Solid base hit for Clevenger. Seth Smith will hold it second. Clevenger. Second spring hit. Not sure how much playing time he's going to get this year because he will be the backup to Ionetta. Solid base hit for him. I wonder if at some point today we'll get to see Munanori Kawasaki. Remember Energy Boy from a few years ago with the Mariners, most recently with Toronto. He's Backup infielder for the Cubs. Listed here on today's roster. Yeah, I heard early this morning that he was going to be here. Aoki put to the plate, but foul. It's one for two. Infield hit and fly out the right. Had a run scored. One one pitch. A couple of men on, one out. Can not trying to do too much. Said 1963 at bats in his major league career has only struck out 169 times. For Aoki, a career 353 on base percentage. 2 2 pitch. It's a tough play. Nicely turned by the Cubs. We'll do it. No runs, two hits, no errors. A man left. We've played three. And the Mariners have a 6 3 lead. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines.
Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines. Joaquin Benoit was one of the main additions by new general manager Jerry Depoto this offseason to help fix the Mariners' bullpen. He's got a proven track record as a middle reliever. Now for Benoit, it really doesn't matter which inning he takes the mound. I don't see any difference between the ninth inning and the eighth inning. The only percentage that of the time that you're going to face the heart of the lineup in the eighth inning is higher than the, you're going to face the heart of the lineup in the ninth inning. That I'm sure. He can handle the eighth or ninth. Today he's going to handle the fourth as we go back to Peoria. David Mike, he's going to be a big part of that bullpen, guys. No doubt about it. 14th season. He's seen it all, done it all. Career record of 54 and 42. And a career ERA of 3.84. Early in his career, a starter. First half of his career. Been in the bullpen the remainder of his career. Got a lot, a lot to offer. Still has a pretty good fastball, too. You'll see that today. Not afraid to pitch inside. Big good challenge. Jorge Soler. Home run right center field. First time up. All one. Talking about pitching inside, just misses him with that first pitch fastball. I was paying attention out of the bullpen. <laughs> Shift on against Soler with Cano on the third base side of the second base. When he was talking about pitching to the heart of the order in the eighth inning, which will be his job this year. I, I thought it was interesting basically and I was there when he was talking about that and he puts just as much of importance on the eighth inning you have to be able to get to the ninth so he feels that he's going to be a really big part important part of the bullpen he was also talking about earlier in his career you mentioned it Dave him being a starter he said it was frustrating at times because he kept going back and forth because he could pitch out of the bullpen it, it was like he would lose his starting job because they had a need out there and he would go back and forth all the time. He didn't particularly like that too much. It was too good. Yeah, I think I think he likes at least knowing what he's going to do. I can understand that he has pitched in 970 big league innings. Three and one right now. That's a good fastball. Count three and two. Soler leading off here in the fourth, followed by Ross and Candelaria. Marte just got him. That's a nice play with the pirouette. So there was busting it down the line. Marte beat him with the throw. Yeah, I think the ground ball fooled him a little bit. It looked like he was going to get a pretty good hop, but then it flattens out on him right there, and he has to make an adjustment. Sardinius, big play. Sardinius, Sardinius. yeah. Nice Great. play. It's very nice. Enhancing his chances, making this ball. Good. Seeing him at shortstop couple of times this spring and he has a strong throwing arm we were able to see it there on that play moves well mm -hmm. nice adjustment on that ground ball Here's David Ross Wade Miley joins us right now Dave Sims and Mike Flowers Wade uh, good to have you with us uh, first inning one two three second uh, third inning one, two, three. Talk about that second inning. Got roughed up a little bit. Yeah, I just left some balls over the middle of the plate, you know, working on trying to get the ball in a little bit. Just didn't didn't really accomplish that. That's a good group of, of uh, hitters over there we were facing. And uh, just didn't get the ball in enough and just kind of left it up. And uh, they did what they were supposed to do. Wade, how do you how are you feeling at this point in the spring? I feel good. I feel about where I need to be at. Um, um, just 
keep going and, and, and keep getting the pitch count up, keep uh, getting stronger, and, uh, and get ready for the season. The fans back in Seattle watching the game today, I was uh, commenting, it looked as if because of all the right-handed hitters the Cubs were throwing at you today, you mentioned pitching inside. Do you typically like to cut the fastball in there, or, or do you mix it up? Um, I was actually trying to sink it back over the plate. That was okay. that was kind of the issue. I was catching too much plate. I was trying to throw a lot of comebackers and uh, just get a feel for it. Uh, something. I mean, I usually wouldn't do it as much as I did it today, but it was... Uh, it's just trying to get a feel for it, trying to make that adjustment. Just never was really able to, and uh, that's just and that kind of that's what happened. Right, spring training, Arizona, exactly. Um, I, I think the other thing too, we and we, I heard about it today was the first day I had a chance to see you throw, but everybody's talking about how quickly you work. Have you always been that way? Yeah, probably since college, freshman year in college, uh, kind of pick up the pace a little bit, tempo. I know the defense, uh, they don't, they, they'd much rather uh, um, the pace, so I try to keep that going. And it's got to work uh, really well for you. I know the guys appreciate that. Uh, so far, so good here in the camp. What do you think of this new group of guys you're a big part of? Oh, good group of guys. You know, we're having fun getting to know each other. Scott's doing a great job of, uh, of just kind of bringing us together and, and sending us out doing goofy things. But, uh, but you know, getting to know everybody, that's, that, was a, that was the thing. Uh, it's a lot of new, new guys around, and uh, just being able to hang out, spend some time with them, and, uh, and, and learn about each, each, each and every one. I look forward to getting you uh, back to 200 uh, innings on the season and uh, a lot of success this year. Thanks for uh, giving up a little bit of your time here. We appreciate it, man. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. You bet. Wade Miley, Mariner starter. Three innings of work, four hits. Struck out one, didn't walk anybody. He is right, too. His defense is going to love playing behind him. There's Candelario, the DH. Ground rule double left field last time up. The first time up. Did he go? He did. So check with Adrian Johnson down at third. 0 oh 2. Benoit, two out, nobody on here in the top of the fourth. Mariners three runs in the first. Cubs answered right back. Three runs top of the second. And then the Mariners took advantage in the home second. Three runs, three hits, took advantage of three errors. Good pitch by Benoit. Fine inning. One, two, three, go the Cubs. In the fourth, it's 6-3. Mariners. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines. new parts of our studio here and we want to know where you're watching today's game show us by sharing your photos of you or your friends cheering on your team use the hashtag where I root on Facebook Twitter or Instagram and you could be featured on air like this little man Tim and Holland he tells us baseball is known as honk ball but he's raising Benjamin to be a Mariners fan I don't know about that do we believe Tim honk ball come on have him hang with the kids Milk Creek home for a great year we are too hashtag where I root and Tim Williams Enjoying the game today from Post Falls, Idaho. Certainly appreciate all the pictures. Keep them coming. Your chance to get on air. Let's go back to Dave and Mike. What do you guys think? Hol well, Blow, you know a little bit of something about uh, being overseas. Is that right, honk ball? Never heard of it. Okay. <laughs> That's 
That's what they call it at Holland, I'm told. Hawk ball as you look at Luis Sardin is having a good day. Bunt the base hit, single to left, and an RBI scored twice. Ryan Williams is the pitcher. When you look at him from straight on, if you're just walking into the ballpark real quick. You'd think it was Jake Arrieta. Looks a lot like him with the full beard. Doesn't quite have Jake's curveball, though. Not many do. Three one to Sardinius, and he's aboard for the third consecutive time. Mariners spring training baseball is live with the MLB.com at bat app. Stay connected all spring with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Robinson Cano for the third time. Tap back to the pitcher. Reached on an error by the shortstop. And who have we found? Yes, indeed. That's a great book. The Black Aces, the 20 game winners. African American pitchers. Mudcat Grant, good man. And Ferguson Jenkins, Hall of Famer on the right. Good to see Mudcat. Looks great. 1965, man, did he put up a year with the American League champion Minnesota Twins? He and Jim Cott, Jim Perry. Great rotation, lost to Sandy Koufax and the Dodgers in seven games. And you had a great interview with uh, with him last year. I did, and, and Ron Fairley was here. You were talking oh, that about was that. was fun. Yeah, and Ronnie was here. It was a lot of fun, two of them together. Runner goes. Throw down the second. High, but in time is the shortstop. The ground comes down with the toss from David Ross. So Sardinius. First time he's been caught stealing. Fergie Jenkins, big part of my youth. Still angry he got traded by the 64 Phillies. Went on to a Hall of Fame career, Texas and the Cubs. I know you are because you mention it every, every time. time. <laughs> Could have had a chance. Could have been a contender. <laughs> Great pitcher. Terrific curveball. Good fastball. Placed it. Used the uh, high fastball very effectively. And was a complete game. Monster in his time is Robbie. Drills one right field base hit. We'll take a look at the swing by Cano. Fastball in the middle of the plate. He can handle that. And that will be the end of his day. Looks like uh, Sean O'Malley is going to pinch run for Robbie. Sean will take over at second base. Good day for Robinson Cano. He's right. Robbie's dialed in. He's hitting the ball hard. He looks good. Romero having a good afternoon. He's driven in three runs. Double to left. Plated two. And then an infield hit. Taking off O'Malley. Wasting no time. He is out. Out to four. Alley caught for the first time this season. He had been four for four. Well, manager Scott Service talking to him. He said he's given all these guys the green light in spring training. And he's encouraged them to run. He wants to see what they can do. Well, it was a pretty good jump, but a quick release. And a good throw by David Ross, catcher for the Cubs. Foul ball. He's got a big piece of Ross. Two out, nobody on. That play Romero straight up. Three, three called. David Ross throws out two would be Steelers and a strikeout. For Ryan Williams, 6-3 Mariners, Mariners Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines.
66 in Kingman, Arizona. And it goes up to Andy Devine Avenue, one of the great American character actors and comic cowboy sidekick. He grew up in Kingman. And he was a Hollywood star for a lot of years, a lot of westerns. Got a star from Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6366 Hollywood Boulevard. Andy Devine had a, you could hear, you could pick his voice out. High, scratchy, high pitched voice, a great, he had a big white suit on Saturday mornings, a big TV show. He was a beauty. Casey Coleman taking over on the mound for the Mariners. Chris Taylor in the game now playing shortstop. O'Malley stayed in the game. He is at second base. Taylor Davis, the first baseman. Good inning of work for Benoit. Scott Service was saying the other day he only wants him to get maybe six or seven appearances in the spring. Not going to take much for him to get ready to go. Beauty of having a veteran like that. Mm -hmm. Taylor Davis RBI double to right his first time up. High two and two. Third appearance for Mariner reliever Casey Coleman. One inning against San Diego on March 3rd. Two innings at Texas. Line drive nicely done there by Sean O'Malley to snag that uh, line drive. Breaking ball away. Defensive swing and a well-timed jump by O'Malley. Right in the webbing of his glove. There is Mendy Alcantara, second baseman, RBI single to center in the second inning. Mariners have the shift on now, so Taylor over on the right side of the infield. Seen that quite a bit here in the early going of spring training. A lot of shifts for the Mariners. Mariners three runs in the first, three in the second. Cubs got their three runs in the second inning. Chris Basio, Joe Madden. Here's the O2. Christopher Negron, the shortstop. He's on deck for the Cubbies. Two and two. Cubs with one win this season. It was game two. They beat the Angels 3 0. They've lost six consecutive ball games. Lost at home to Cleveland yesterday 5 to 3. Two balls and two strikes. We'll see the Cubs. July 29, 30 31. The Mariners will be playing the National League Central this year. Three called. Pitch by Casey Coleman. Two down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Two out, nobody on. Here's Negron, the shortstop. Bounce down out to Ed Lucas at third.
tune-up. Coleman now to the nine-hole hitter. It's behind three and zero. Oh. Strike on a quarter three and one. Oh, he puts a charge into this one. That is gone. Way up on the berm. Three one pitch Negron with a home run is first of the spring. 3 1 pitch drives it out of here. 6 4 ball game. No, no, fastball right in the middle of the plate. Casey Coleman did not want to walk the number nine hitter, unfortunately, falling behind. He's able to cheat a little bit, get the barrel started early, and catches up to that fastball. Warm day here, low 80s, wind blowing out. Top of the order, and Javier Baez. Breaking ball for strike. Count. I'm trying to get that breaking ball working. Coming a right hander out of Fort Myers, Florida. Six foot 185. Omaha in the Kansas City system last year. Five and four record of 492 ERA. And two. Coleman spent some time with the Cubs in 2010, 11, and 12. Four and two and oh nine, three and nine a year later. Had a chance to see Baez lead off hitter for the Cubs last spring and he doesn't get cheated, does he? He takes a full swing. Mm -hmm. Jumps on a breaking ball, puts it in the corner, left field. And he thought about three, shut it down with a two out double. Breaking ball down probably would have been a ball, but he's able to dig it out and hit it down into the corner. Here's up John Andreoli came in in the third inning in left field for Kyle Schwerber. Strike one to John. And Rolly, one for eight in the spring. Aoki in center field, not too deep. Step. Towards a couple of steps towards right field. One one pitch. Two and one. It's a 
high strike two and two. It looks like Coleman looks like he has a good fastball today, but you're right, Dave. He has struggled with his breaking ball, the command of it. Two-two pitch. Breaking ball foul back. Mariners will play at the Giants tomorrow in Scottsdale. Split squad action, Cincinnati. Part of the squad will be in Cincy on Saturday afternoon. We'll be here against the Dodgers on TV on Saturday night. Coleman's worked the full count. On deck hitter, Chris Bryant. Payoff pitch runner at second, two outs. And time called. Good crowd here in the berm. Here's a big pitch at three and two. And lost them. Coleman looks very unsure of himself out there right now. And he's had to throw a lot of pitches. Next pitch will be 30 for him in the inning. Now Stottlemyer, pitching coach, making a trip out to the mound now, so the clock has started. Spring training, who has a tougher job, pitching coach or hitting coach? I'm, I'm a oh, pitching coach. I think, I think the pitching, pitching coach, coach. Yeah. yeah. These guys are still trying to build up arm strength. They don't have real good feel for their off speed pitches. And so I think they, the pitching coach probably has a lot more work to do. I was watching some of the bullpens today, and that's basically what guys were throwing probably, I don't know, 85% and trying to work on their off speed pitches more than anything, work both sides of the plate. Ball misses ball one. Chris Bryant fly to right, fly to left, 0 for 2. He's going to have to throw Bryant a strike. Tying runs are aboard. Bryant representing the go ahead run here in the fifth inning. Big pitch here, 2 and 0. Oh. Back safely as Baez. Two O pitch to Chris Bryant. Takes it for fast. Takes a fastball for strike. Two one pitch. Came back on a curveball, popped it up. Romero fighting the sun and makes the catch. Cubs get a run on two hits. No errors leave two. Mariners still lead. 6 4. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines.
Still leading the Cubs 6-4 as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning in Peoria. We'll get out there in just a second. Brad Adam with you at the Ford Sports Desk. Every Monday, experience the greatest Mariners moments from last season with Mariners Mondays. Tune in this week at 10 p.m. Pacific as the King takes on some of the best. For your local programming schedule, visit RootSports.com. So the King Monday night. Now earlier on Monday, the King making his Cactus League debut right here on Root Sports as the King gets back on the mound. People in the burn. People out there, guys, get to watch Felix, and no doubt we will be excited, too, to see him as he makes his spring training debut. Looking forward to it. No doubt about it. Thanks, Brad. Good day to be on the berm here. Temperature up to 84 degrees right now. At Peoria Sports Complex, Dave Sims and Mike Flowers and Root Sports Crew. 6-4 lead for the Mariners. Cubs bring in Hector Rondon. Saved 30 games for him last year, 29 the year before. 6-4 record, a 1-6-7 ERA last season. Adam Lind is his first hitter. RBI double in the first strikeout in the second. It'll be Adam Lind, Gabby Sanchez, and Seth Smith. If it's not Smith, it'll be Dario Pisano who's scheduled to take his spot. Adam Lind drives another one into the gap. Right center field. And Adam Lind continues. When he's left off every year where he can really hit right-hand pitching. Two for three day, a couple of doubles. One of the things we've seen today is these guys, when they're getting into hitters' counts, they are really squaring up the baseball. Lines just went into the gap in right center field. But another 2-0 count. Herbie Field's going to pinch run. Sanchez, the hitter, goes up the middle base hit. Fields coming around. He's a flyer. And he's going to score the throw way offline, off the glove of Ross. Runner at first will hold. So Gabby Sanchez, an RBI single, 7 4 Mariners. Well, aggressive first pitch swing gets a fastball and drives it right back up the middle looks like the second baseman ended up getting a piece of it slowed it down a little bit so it was easy for fields to score good for Gabby Sanchez so Efren Navarro pinch runs Mariner lead at 7 4. And here's Seth Smith. Slider in there for strike. Seth Smith, one for two, strike out and a base hit. Madden, 2015 manager of the year in the National League. I see Rick. Cubs getting to the National League Championship Series. But they lost to the New York Mets. They were swept. They beat the Cardinals to get there. They won the division series three games to one. Bob Nightingale in USA Today was over at Cardinal camp, and Cardinals basically see Matt Adams and a boy saying, okay, let the, let the Cubs have all the accolades preseason. Let them have all the expectations. Everybody saying they're going to get to the World Series, they still got to beat us again. I liked it. It was good stuff in the <laughs> paper today. It's let them enjoy it. Yeah, it's, it's a good ball club they have in St. Louis. They'll, they'll end up being right there in September. 
This one gets crushed and hooks foul. Cardinals, what a division last year. Cardinals won 100 games, Pittsburgh 98 games, and the Cubs 97. The Pirates can't get out of the uh, wild card game. Three and two to Seth Smith. Breaking ball. Stayed up for him and he hit it hard. Base hit, Seth Smith. And we'll get another pinch runner. A couple of hits for Seth today, so a good day for him. It's Rosario. Mario Pizzano will pinch run. Good day for Seth Smith. Two solid base hits. Those three men have reached against Rondon. Double RBI single and a base hit. A couple of men aboard now. Here's Ed Lucas. Ground rule double and a strikeout. Strike one, Ed. Seven runs, 13 hits for the Mariners. Four runs, six hits, three errors by the Cubs. Pie. Or one. Pinch out there by Rondon, one and two. That look is facing Rondon, who was 10th in saves in the National League last year. Trying to put a nice wrinkle in that pitch. Strikes out Lucas, first out of the fifth inning. Well, you're right, after a couple of fastballs to get ahead of him. Right back with a little breaking ball. Brings up Steve Clevenger, one for two of the run score. Saturday's telecast against the Dodgers. We'll get a look at James Paxton. He'll start 6.30 Pacific time. All up the middle. This will be a double play. And that'll do it for the Mariners in the fifth. They had another run and have a 7-4 lead. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines.
Seattle Mariners baseball on sports being brought to you by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Get a good look at House Rock Valley in northern Arizona. Bring you Cactus League Baseball Spring Training 2016. Good to have you here on Root Sports. Second of 16 telecasts this spring. Getting you ready for the 2016 regular season. Peoria Sports Complex. Good crowd with the Cubbies on hand. Mariners lead 7-4. 85 degrees this afternoon. Bright sunshine. No clouds in sight. Really nice. Host of changes. We'll run them down as we go through. Mike Zanino. The new catcher, Michael Guaype. Is the new pitcher for the Mariners. Cubs will be sending up four, five, and six in their order. Since glove hand, that shouldn't be a problem. It's like Tyler Smith is going to take over at third base. Montero at first, first. base. Daniel Robertson in left field. That Boog in center, Boog Pal. And what Pisano and should be Pisano at right. Yeah, I think you're right. He's got some kind of bracelet on it. It was aggravating Guaype. He finally got it off. I don't know if he broke it or not, but it's off. <laughs> Get off of me! Soler showed some big power leading off the second inning. 1 0 pitch, drove it over the fence in right center field. Second time up, he grounded out the shortstop. Might be a hard thrower, just a matter of location being more consistent. Pitch. A good breaking ball right off the outside corner. Stefan Romero joined us. Good day for him today with uh, two for three, three runs batted in. So that gives you eight for 14 on the spring. You are swinging it good. It feels great, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Thanks, guys. What, what's been the bit? What's been the big difference for you this year with the early success? Uh, just approach, uh, you know, trying to look for a ball up in the zone, um, you know, not swinging first pitch, you know, see a couple pitches and, you know, uh, make the pitcher work and see the ball up. It seems, Stefan, watching you too today, I, I was commenting on it. Um, it looks to me in the counts when you're falling behind 0-2, 1-2, um, you're doing a really nice job of hitting what at times have been pretty good breaking ball. So you're doing a nice job keeping your hands back, trying to stay up in the middle of the field. Yeah, I'm just trying to stay, like you said, just stay in the middle of the field and, you know, trust my approach. And, you know, hopefully, I mean, pitchers aren't perfect, so they're going to make a mistake regardless unless they're really, really good that day. But it's spring, it's early on, so they're going to make a little bit of uh, mistakes early on, and you got to capitalize. One of the things that we, we've heard a lot about, especially over the last few days, is you getting an opportunity to maybe play some first base in the spring. Yeah, I've been taking uh, ground balls early work every day. Um, I've been fortunate to play uh, two games at first, get my feet wet a little bit. The first day didn't go all that well. Um, I had the infamous E6-3 that we play. <laughs> but uh, my, my knee feels 100% uh, now, just a, little, just a little bruised. But, you know, I'm anxious to get back out there again. Walk us through what your life has been like here. This is, what, your third camp. So... You know, your comfort about your comfort level's got to be so much better than it was that first time you came in right yeah i mean the first time big league camp you know you're in awe a little bit seeing all the veteran guys in the clubhouse um you're a rookie and you don't really know how to act you don't know really who to follow they just tell you follow follow the the veteran guys and, and learn from them but now it's my third year so you know i just go out there just follow my routine in the morning and you know if i'm playing that day just get my mind right to play the game with on that line Stefan, when you think about it, and last year you had a really good year in AAA and inconsistent playing time at the major league level. Do you feel with maybe every year and a little more experience that maybe you can handle that type of role better? Yeah, without a doubt, especially uh, in 14. I had a lot of ups and downs, but it was a great learning experience. We had uh, Ibanez in 13, and, you know, he just said, you know, just got to prepare and 
if you fail if you fail to prepare you prepare to fail so that, that's one of my models going into every year is just just be prepared and whatever they ask of you just do it well keep it up man you're having a great uh, a great spring and, and you certainly have opened the eyes of this new coaching staff and your versatility is going to come in very handy here okay thanks guys all right man stefan romero joining us here is guaype pitches to david ross fouls it off off his foot that's got to hurt like crazy yeah, it looked like it was his ankle. That one hurts. Well, hopefully Stephen can stay right where he's at. He, he is really seeing the ball well and has hit the ball extremely hard this spring here in the early going. A lot of good things. All two strikes. Last year, Guaype had a lot of trouble with the breaking ball. They had to come up the fastball. They're sitting on it, and kaboom. Yeah, the thing with this breaking ball, I think at times he would try to overthrow it, Dave, try to throw it too hard, and sometimes when he would want that pitch off the plate away or try to bury it in the dirt, he ended up leaving it elevated. When you have two strikes and you're somewhat defensive, uh, that's, a, that's a pretty easy pitch to hit. So hopefully he can get to the point to where he's able to throw some good ones like that right there. That was a beauty. But... You have to respect his velocity. He has a good fastball. He'll be 93 to 95 miles an hour. We'll take a look at this last breaking ball. Maybe up just a little bit for him, but nice frame by Zanino. So two outs here in the Cubs' top of the sixth. This is Jomer Candelario, the DH. Ground rule double in the second inning. A strikeout in the fourth. Mariners three runs in the first, three in the second, one in the fifth. Cubs three in the second, one in the fifth. That's in ball. Montero stays with it. And they got him. Wow, he didn't quit on it. And Guaype got there and held the bag. Well done. Guaype pitches a one, two, three inning. And Jesus Montero. He played hand grenades for a little bit, but was able to recover and makes the play. Iron Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines. Back to Mariners Spring Training here on Root Sports. I'm Brad Adam alongside Mr. Bill Kruger in front of our monitor wall looking very nice yes. behind us. Baseball continues to implement safety precautions to keep their players safe and the game safe, which makes sense. We wanted to dig into the past a little bit. On this day, March 10th, in baseball history, 1941, the Dodgers announced their players will begin to wear helmets when batting. Now, the use of safety headgear would not become mandatory in the National League until 1954, and the AL will follow suit four years later. All right, Bill. What safety precautions did you see in your major league 
career it didn't leak when you were playing? Uh, there's been a few. I had to kind of think about it for a few minutes, but uh, I remember the throat guard, uh, Steve Yeager of the Dodgers. He brought that in for catchers. Because that before that, they had no protection for the throat. That was a, a really a, a nice addition. And then I, uh, my old uh, battery mate, Charlie O'Brien, brought in the uh, hockey helmet. Uh, the goalie style helmet to protect the back of the head for uh, for catchers, uh, pretty innovative. And then most of the rest of the stuff's been for hitters. You've had the a uh, lot of guards, a lot of armor. Uh, you know, I, I wonder at what point did the uh, pitchers get the L screen, Brad? That's what I was kind of wondering with all the, I mean, or maybe if you hit the uh, armor, it's just a neutral pitch. It's, no, it's a no pitch rather than a hit batsman. That'd be fair. Yeah, that'd be fair. Coming from a pitcher, let's yeah. hear from the hitter and Mike Blowers <laughs> during your playing day. Did you? Add a lot of that armor. Do you see a lot of, of different equipment that guys use when you play blow? Well, I, I know for myself, just watching the last at bat by David Ross and him hitting that ball off his ankle, I used to wear a little guard around my ankle uh, just to stay away from that because I, I did that one time. I ended up missing some playing time because of it, so I decided I wasn't going to let that happen again. One of the things, though, that I was really surprised with when I first um, arrived at the big leagues where there were still some guys that did not have the ear flap on their helmet. I know Dave Winfield didn't wear an ear flap when I was in Seattle. Pete O'Brien did not have one. And I don't think I would have ever been comfortable standing in a batter's box without that ear flap on there. That's that's something I think that you have to have. Yeah. So, Yeah, Blow, I remember Ron Say getting hit by Goose Gossage in the World Series and he got hit right, ab right above where the flap was. And you think... That would have made him change his mind. I don't think he did. Ron kept the uh, no flap thing going his whole career. Crazy. I know I talked to Pete O'Brien about it, Bill, <laughs> and and you're absolutely right. I talked to Pete O'Brien about it, and he just said that it didn't feel comfortable to him. And I, <laughs> I would have made, I would make it feel comfortable. I'll tell you yes. that. All right, Chris Taylor. Seems like they'll blow. Everybody seems to have something, but you kind of understand it because you've been in the box and you just imagine being in the box and staring down at you know guy throws 95 97 maybe uh gets away from him every once in a while i mean you want to protect yourself the best you can in, in in the box well and i think that there's a certain um element of confidence in there i know that bill was talking about the guys wearing the elbow guards and all of that kind of thing but i, I think if especially at this level these guys throw so hard um, if you get yourself into a count where you're 0-2, 1-2, and it's righty on righty, and you're having to hang in there and stay on that slider down the way, and all of a sudden a fastball gets away from him, I think you feel a little bit better about staying in there if you have that ear flap. But it's, uh, I think it's a, a critical piece of equipment. And, you know, now you see the third base and the first base coach is also wearing helmets out there for that reason. So you, you have to protect yourself if you can. No, I, I'm with you, Mike. I think uh, you want the best players playing every day. You want safety. Uh, I think it's only smart. Uh, to institute some of these things, that was kind of tongue-in-cheek. Speaking of cheek, we've seen a guy that also is uh, Baez had the helmet uh, guard that went across the uh, face for guys that have had uh, injuries to the, the head area. Those, that's another thing yeah. that's, that's relatively new as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But why not, if you can get it, I, I think you go ahead and, and you have a piece of equipment. It's legal. May as well use it. I know, laughingly, you guys were talking about Val earlier. Val used to tell me that he would put every piece of equipment he could find to get back behind the plate, especially later in his career. <laughs> no surprise there. Protect your assets. You catch, you catch RJ, you'd have to do whatever you got to do there. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting out of that one without a, a couple of bumps and bruises, no doubt, guys. Also put a wrap on the inning here. Carl Edwards Jr. took over, struck out the first two, and retires O'Malley. One, two, three in the sixth. Seventh inning coming up. Mariners on top of the Cubs. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines.
Yeah, what the day looks like here at the Peoria Sports Complex. Fans starting to make their way in. Of course, Cub fans travel well. Got a big crowd of it. We got about 10, 11,000 here today. And this is what it looked like with the folks getting their tickets and coming to watch some Cactus League baseball. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports Crew on hand here at Peoria. Back with you on Saturday night, 6.30 Seattle time. Dodgers will be here in town. Spring training 2016. Guess what? They're not getting out in a hurry, that's for sure. <laughs> a little traffic jam out on all 83rd. Here's Mariner headquarters for spring training. Emilio Pagan takes over on the mound for the Mariners. He is the fifth pitcher today. First hitter's Taylor Davis pops up the first pitch. Davis one for two, RBI double to right in the second, and a line out to second base in the fifth. Oh and two. Dan Wilson. A nice conversation with Dan this morning. Looking at more tape, trying to help the catchers out. Pagan's got Taylor. 0 oh, 2. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Elio Pagan out of Greenville, South Carolina. Buy more and save with a group outing to Safeco Field fans. Whether you're organizing a school family night, fundraising for a nonprofit organization, or planning a party, attending a Mariners game as a group is a great way to spend time with family and friends. All at a discounted price. So pick your 2016 group date when you visit Mariners.com slash groups. Ground ball off the bat of Alcantara. And he beats it out. A little bit of a bobble by Sean O'Malley. I'll take a look at the ground ball. Right off the heel of his glove, he's able to stay with it. Wasn't able to get much on the throw. And a good pick by Montero over at first. E4. One out, one on. And it brings up Negron, who moved from shortstop to third base. Pagan, 24 years old, 6'3", 205, delivers a strike. Tenth round pick by the Mariners in the 13, 2013 draft. Played college ball at Gardner-Webb in 2010 and 11. Then transferred to Belmont Abbey College. Well inside. Last year with Bakersfield. 42 games, 3 and 8 record, 2.53 ERA. 78 in the third innings, 27 walks, and an impressive 88 strikeouts. 1 1. Zanino, throw down the second, safe. Pretty quick throw by Zanino. He was able to get rid of it. Had something on it. And you can see he had to go up the line a little bit. Chris Taylor had to go up the line. And that was different by the time he was able to put the tag on his hand was in there. Stolen base for Alcantara. That's his fourth. Been caught once. Swing and a miss. Good pitch by Pagan. To retire Negron. Two down. Seven four Mariners. 
three runs in the first, three in the second, one in the fifth. Cubbies three in the second, one in the fifth. Javier Baez, one for three this afternoon. Supercharged shot, deep left field, goodbye. Up on the berm, no doubt about it. Two run homer. Javier Baez, his first of the season, his first two runs batted in. No question about it. It looked like a fastball middle end trying to get it probably in off the plate. When it's down like that, just drop the barrel on it. And that's what Baez did. One run lead now for the Mariners in the seventh. He's in Frioli. The second time up, he walked back in the fifth. And this youngster. Mariner fan enjoying newfound possession. Oregon Ducks just beat Washington Huskies in the Pac 12 quarterfinals. College Hoops. Munanori Kawasaki's on deck. Foul back. Breaking ball hit to the shortstop, Chris Taylor. And throws out Andrioli. Good inning for the Cubs. They get a two-run over by Baez to draw closer at 7-6. Mariners home seventh stretch time. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines. Sing. Brad Adam with you here at the Ford Sports Desk. Tune in next week on Wednesday, March 16th, Mariners fans, 4 p.m., a special edition of Mariners All Access. Get exclusive player interviews, behind the scenes footage, and Mariners stories you can't find anywhere else. If you missed the episode, tune in for a re air that night at 6 30 Pacific. For your local programming schedule, visit rootsports.com. Those guys are out there singing, no doubt about that. You go to the Bottom of the seventh inning, Mariners still up by one. Back to David Mike.
All right, Brad, thank you very much. So we get to the home seventh inning. Good, good crowd. Haven't got the attendance total yet, but it's a very good crowd. This afternoon, Cubs in town. Mariners go to the Giants tomorrow, home for the Dodgers. Back on TV on Saturday evening, 6.30 Seattle time. James Paxton will get the start. Here's Daniel Robertson. Man, he had a good spring. Still early. It's only March 10th. He brings some energy yes, to the game. He does. He's, He's hitting 545, 6 for 11, 12 total bases, two doubles, two triples. He can really run. He's run down a couple of balls in the outfield, too. New pitcher is Brendan Gomes. Joe Madden is quite familiar with. He spent the last five years with Tampa Bay. Two and zero to Robertson. They get three and zero. Gomes with a big league record of eleven and twelve, four two zero ERA. Jesus Montero's on deck. It's a four pitch walk to Robertson to start things off in the Mariners seventh. Well, it is a veritable casting call first base position a right hand platoon with Gabby Sanchez. You've got Dejo Lee. You've got Jesus Montero, you got Stefan Romero. One of those guys is going to be the right hand platoon. Go with Adam Lind. And Lind today really swung the bat well, going two for three, a run scored, and drove in a run. Well, here early in spring training, all of the guys that you just mentioned, Dave, getting plenty of opportunities at the plate. Show Scott Service what they can do. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. Robertson at first has yet to attempt a stolen base. Mariners have had a couple of guys thrown out today. Sardinius and O'Malley back in the fourth. Even with those two caught stealings, the Mariners are still 12 out of 16. It's pretty good. Very good number. Been good to see Julio Cruz in camp, working with the guys on their leads. Passing on knowledge that he got from Lou Brock and Maury Wills. So he did see Ricky Henderson when they were when he had an opportunity. Hey, what did you look for? What did you do? Now he was doing that with the the videotape too, just having pitchers up there and, and showing some keys to the guys that are going to try to steal bases, maybe get a little better jump at first base. See it from here. He was leaning. He was ready to go. Picked off one three, one down. And Julio. He was having a lot of fun this morning. I think he's enjoyed being down here, putting the uniform back on, yep. and being with the guys. Able to catch up with guys too. He and talking to he and Pat Listash, Pat Coma manager. And Pat was rookie of the year in Milwaukee early 90s. And Pat said, uh, Julio said, ask Pat who who he learned from stealing bases. It's Julio Cruz, 78 stolen bases that year for Pat. And you can see Julio right there saying that that move to first was a balk. Well, two strikes to Montero fell back. Wilson Contreras is the new catcher. As you mentioned, Brandon Gomes, the pitcher, is out of Fall River, Massachusetts. Mariners have Massachusetts native and Steve Ciszek, their closers from Falmouth, Mass, out on Cape Cod. It's 
two balls, two strikes to Montero. Jesus, three for 15 on the spring. It's worked the full count. Efren Navarro waits his first turn, swing to bat. Jesus through the hole, base hit. Did a pretty good job staying on the 3 2 breaking ball. Looked like it was on the outer half of the plate, but he stayed with it. He is strong. One out. Montero at first. Brings up Navarro. Looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 8 on the spring. Walked twice and scored twice in the six games he's played. Get the out at first. That's new first baseman Matt Clark. Two away. Montero to second. Hey fans, if you're still looking for tickets to next month's home opener, then visit Mariners.com slash opening night. You're going to find information on how you can guarantee your seat by purchasing a 10-game flex pack or a 20 game plan. Check it out today. Mariners.com slash opening night. Well, a couple of guys from Massachusetts. This is Dario Pisano. He's from Boston. Nearby Luke Air Force Base. Your tax dollars at work. Go Air Force. You've seen or you've heard that roar, Mike, like the opening day for baseball. I've done some opening days for football. And bad boys come down at about, I don't know, six, seven hundred feet at full throttle. Whoa. It, gives you, it gives you chills. Yes, it, it does. does. Yeah. I like the way I know it. Been at football games where they time it and the home of it. And here they come. They can see this full throttle and they just open it up and they just roar right through. Popped up and it is playable. Wilson Contreras with the catch. Rosario Pisano, beg your pardon, is retired. Mariners still lead at 7 6. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines.
Seven six Mariners as we look at some Joshua trees ninety miles northwest of here, en route to Las Vegas, Nevada. Mariners lead at seven six over the Cubs, and Bill Kruger going to join us right now. I'm going to toss a couple things around about the way the two leagues are situated. Bill, you look over in the National League. St. Louis, Pittsburgh, Chicago. Well, if you figure L.A., San Francisco, and Arizona, what's that, six or eight teams look like they have a real good shot at the playoffs and maybe go and go deep. Meanwhile, in the American League, it seems like there's a bigger pool of, of, out, of really good teams. Well, I, I really agree with you. It seems like the A.L., almost every team is trying. I mean, the only team I could look at that had me pause for a second was Oakland, but they make you pause every year. Right when they, you think they haven't got anything, they go out and win 90 plus games. So, uh, but you look at that a National League side: Atlanta, the Phillies, Milwaukee, Cincinnati. I can keep counting. Maybe San Diego, Colorado. There's a lot of teams in there. There's four that are definitely not trying. In American League, I mean, even Boston and Detroit, two of the real doormats last year, they might not have made significant changes. Uh, Boston went out and got Price and Kimbrell, and Detroit added Zimmerman, Upton. Upton. You know, they, they, they're definitely uh, teams in the American League that feel that they, they got a chance. And so I think the, the, the landscape in the American League is going to be a lot tougher. There are going to be some, uh, a bunch of very, like you said, a handful of National League teams that are all going to win 90, 95 games or more. I think there's definitely more parity in, in the American League. I, I think that. It'd be really tough to try to handicap it, really. And then, you know, you mentioned it, Dave, some of the teams that nationally, guys that are out in front. I'd throw the Mets in that group that you, you brought up. Yeah, the Mets are pretty good, too. Mets but, in Washington. I forgot but, about that. But then now. there are some teams that are basically, you look at them, you get the feeling they're almost starting over. And so you, ha you have some spots in your schedule where maybe you can get some guys some rest and, and do some different things because you should be able to handle some of those teams a little bit easier than what you're going to get in the American League because you really, you're really you really not looking at too many breaks in the American League. So the impact of, of you know, in the American League, you're not going to get a blow at all. No. Not even close compared to the National League. I mean, you can, looking at, uh, you know, Miami was 20 under 500 last year, Atlanta and Philly, Brewers, Reds, Padres, Colorado. Some bad clubs. You know, with, with all the, uh, you know, the interdivision where everybody's playing everybody 19 times, uh, that's when you have Atlanta and Philadelphia in your division, you know, or Cincinnati and Milwaukee in your division, and you're a team that's got the capability of winning 100 games like the Cubs or, or perhaps the Mets, uh, they could put some, uh, some distance between people. And what about your thoughts, Bill, when you look at interleague play this year? You have the Mariners, and, and the American League West is going to be tough as it is, but then all of a sudden, you know, you have St. Louis and Chicago, the Chicago Cubs in that mix. Makes it pretty tough. Well, the Mariners already are handicapped by the travel. There, there's no doubt about that. And then, like you said, where you draw for interleague play, <laughs> you draw those two teams, that, that, that's no easy task. And the AL West is going to be a real dogfight. I mean, nobody can really handicap Oakland, but you know they're going to be better than you think. And the rest of the division is going to be tough because the Mariners are going to be a lot better. Um, the Angels, they might slip a little, but they're still a good club. And Houston's going to get better. And Texas is going to be healthy, and they're going to be really good as well. So, uh, boy, I think the AL West really exciting this year. Angels pitching. How big a question mark is that for you? That pitch started thrown away by Fry. Kawasaki, who got a base hit, is going to get the third. He'll hold there. E1. Well, what do you think of that uh, Angels pitching there, Bill? Uh, you, you, you have to you have to be a little bit. You have to wonder a little bit. I mean, is Jared Weaver done? I mean, I mean, he he had trouble throwing his fastball 80 miles an hour last year. Now he's he's made some he's done some work on his mechanics. He's doing a lot more long toss. Hopefully, getting a few hot meals in him. Uh, and C.J. Wilson. A guy that seems to be, you know, has just an enormous amount of talent, but the, you know, hammer and nails to keep the plate down. Uh, and then, you know, after that, uh, they've got some nice young pitching that they're hoping can continue to pitch well. Uh, they've made some pretty shrewd moves at the bottom of the rotation, but uh, the top of the rotation, uh, boy, those two guys are really critical. Bill, thanks a lot. Good discussion. A lot of fun. 3-2 count here to Contreras. Infield up close. Cut off this run, which is the tying run. Munanori Kawasaki, a base hit, takes third. 
And a throwing error by a new pitcher, Paul Fry. And he walks. Fry in just his third game. Two innings. Walk three. Struck out one. Now he's had another one to his walk total. Now this is Ryan Kalish. Strike one. Mariners see the Cubs again later on this spring. Sunday, the 27th, be a 105 start. Fry in some trouble here. Runners at the corners, one run lead, nobody out. One pitch to Ryan Kalish. Nice down the line. That will get foul and out of play. About it a lot, so many times in these games, you get laid into the games, and for the most part, there's a lot of changes. And typically, the guys, your mainstays in your bullpen will pitch earlier in the game. But this is one of those situations where Scott Service and his staff they'll watch these guys and see how they react. So, if you're a younger player, you get Fry out there and, and trying to figure things out. Already a throwing error and a walk. Because he knows that they're feeling some pressure out there. So how do they handle it? How are they going to deal with it? Well, two strikes. Well tagged slicing drive deep left center field. Boog Powell is there to make the catch. Kawasaki will ease home. Hustling back to first is Contreras. But Ryan Kelly Kalish with a sack fly to center field ties the game at seven apiece. And for Ryan. Kalish playing just his third game picks up his first RBI. Tie ball game. And here is Candelario. One for three ground rule double back in the second. Two and oh. Thanks to Nino trying to settle down, Fry. Reno. Back with a strike. Paul Fry, six foot one ninety out of Pontiac, Michigan. Twenty three years old, seventeenth round pick. Back in twenty thirteen by the Mariners. Outside corner. Got it to a full count. Fry was 0 and 2. 180 ERA in 22 games at Jackson last year, the double A affiliate. It's barreled up pretty good, but it's going to stay up in the air for Pisano to make the play. Two outs. Bring up Matt Clark. T 
two outs and runner on a run in seven seven ball game here at the top of the eighth. On one. Ripped center field. Boog Powell watches it hit off the top of the wall. They're going to wave Contreras around. He's lumbering home. Here's the throw to the plate. Not in time. Cubs lead 8 7. Matt Clark. RBI double off the center field fence. He just missed hitting that out of the ballpark. Take a look at it. Missed with the first pitch. Breaking ball comes back with the fastball. He squares it up, and it'll be just below the yellow line. Inning here for Paul Fry. He's given up two runs, given up the lead. Runner at second. And here's Alcantara. Looks at a strike. That is Mindy today, is one for three with an RBI and a run scored. He's the sixth man to the plate here in the eighth inning. Off single throwing error, then a walk. Both of those two runners, first two guys, they have scored. Fouled off. Nine thousand two hundred twenty-six on hand here. O2 two pitch. Outside one and two. A lot of Cub fans on here joining the Mariner fans watching this tilt this afternoon. Here's the one two. Struck him out. Damage done though. Two runs, two hits, and error. Men left to the home eighth here in Peoria. Cubs have the lead 8-7. Mariner Spring Training presented by Delta Airlines. down on his baseball cap. It's Felix ah, Fan out there on the berm. Bottom of eight, Cubs lead 8-7. Welcome back. It's Brad Adam at the Ford Sports Desk. And we want you 
to join the conversation. That's right. For up-to-date game information and live interaction, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Check us out and stay connected with Root Sports all season long. A chance, of course, to get your pictures on our air, on the big monitors up here in the new studio, which still is, is still looking good. We haven't scuffed it up too bad as we go back to Dave and Mike in that eighth inning. You guys look good in that studio. I took a good look at it Thank earlier. You. Well done, man. Good job. Nice walkthrough yesterday to introduce the fans to it. Oh, I appreciate that. Thanks. It was, you know, it's eye-opening <laughs> when you get in here, guys. Wait till you check it out. I'm looking forward to it. All right, Brad. Mariners got some work to do here down 8-7. And Dury Acevedo is the new pitcher for the Cubs. Tyler Smith, the hitter for the Mariners. His first plate appearance. Ball down to third. Ron throws him out. Here comes the Z man, Mike Zanino. Get the chance to swing the bat here. So let's get Mike about what he's trying to do to. Get back on track batting wise. He said he's got a little bit more, get more ry rhythm in his legs, add a leg kick, and trying to keep the shoulders from opening up too soon. Mike, I know you've heard that refrain before and you've probably battled it yourself. Yeah, I think that's all big league hitters have to deal with it at some point. And yeah, Mike doesn't look like he's as spread out as he was before either, so that's a good thing. Mike looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 8 in four games. We talked about it with Mike last year at times. He would get to that point when you mention his front shoulder, that left shoulder, start to go out towards left field, leaking out that way, end up cutting the plate off. Here's McGrun throwing out. Mike busting it down the line, two down. So you talk to Mike, you know, you know he's, he knows he's going down to Tacoma. Right. Talk to him. His attitude is fabulous. I talked to Dan Wilson about it. He said, you just can't believe how resilient this guy is and, and and everybody knows how hard he works but you know look at him busting it down the line right there that was a good you shot at the leg like kick that. that you were talking about yep. yeah he has a lot of talent he'll get it figured out she's book pal first plate appearance for book whoa the contrast might have got crossed up a little bit there <laughs> Almost had to dive into the Mariner dugout, catch that fastball. Another one running way outside. Blake Parker warming up. Three and O to Powell. Chris Taylor waiting on deck. Just getting a chance to play some shortstop today. We've seen him at third base a number of times here in the spring. See if Boog will do some running here to get in scoring position. He's yet to attempt a stolen base, but that is one of Many things in his repertoire. He can he can motor a little bit. Got some daring. Chris Taylor struck out his first time up. That was in the sixth. Four late runs by the Cubs. Two in the seventh. Two in the eighth. Pitch. Hey, two and up.
talking about it with Mike Zanino, but I'm sure Contreras, the catcher, telling Acevedo the same thing. You have to keep that front shoulder in there when you're heading towards home. It's flying open a little bit. Acevedo, a converted third baseman and shortstop. He's 6'4", 235 out of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, 25 years old. Two and one. Sean O'Malley on deck for the Mariners. Runner goes. Boog Powell is in safely. His first stolen base of the spring. First successful steal by the Mariners today. It's like getting a pretty good jump. You can see it right there. Tough pitch for the catcher Contreras to throw on that pitch well inside off the plate. Tying run at second with two outs, 3 1 count. Two outs, two on. Looks like Joe Mann's going to make a pitching change. Joe Mann's going to come and get Enduri Acevedo. Been bouncing around the minor league since 2007. He played in the Dominican Winter League last year. And we'll take a step aside. Pitching change back with more from Peoria where the Cubs lead the Mariners eight to seven. Hikers and explorers in the great state of Arizona. Let's see what kind of elevation there. They're up there pretty good. It's not bad. I don't think there'll be any snakes down there, but walk down, I don't know, about the third hole, Mike, right at the tee box, <laughs> and then you might be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, typically, if I hit my golf ball out there, it's going to stay Leave out it. there. Yeah. <laughs> when you come here and you go to Hawaii, and they, Hit the ball of vegetation. Just drop another ball. Don't even penalize yourself. <laughs> Good scenery. Good workout for the folks. You can see these youngsters here. Cool refreshment. 85 degrees. It's a pleasant 85 today. Not had a cloud in the sky all afternoon. New pitchers Felix Pena. He comes in with two outs, two on. Mariners down a run. Tying it go ahead runs aboard for Sean O'Malley. 
Valley first time up back in the sixth. Grounded out the second. You just came into the game and had a conference. What are you doing? Forgot that there was a runner at second base and there was going to be a series of signs. Wasn't sure which one was the one he wanted to throw, so we'll have a meeting real quick. He didn't start the clock. <laughs> Pena appearing in his third game. He's pitched two innings. One strikeout, and he saved a game. The grip on the breaking ball and Malley's got a 2-0 count. And Malley now six for 13 on the spring. And he's got a good count, 3-0. Daniel Robertson waiting on deck. And a four pitch walk. Three consecutive walks by Cub pitching. Have loaded them up. Two outs, bottom eight. Mariners down a run. Daniel Robertson. Walked in four pitches back in the seventh and then was picked off first. Chance to put the Mariners in the lead here with the base hit. Strike one. Luke Powell at third. Chris Taylor at second. Sean O'Malley at first. Good speed. Pena 6 2 190. Got a San Pedro de Macorís in the Dominican Republic. Been knocking around the Cubs organization since 09 when he was 19 years old. 1 1. Breaking ball for strike. So, so 1 and 2. The count. It's Book Pal at third. Chris Taylor at second. And Sean O'Malley at first with two outs. Eight seven Cubs. Breaking ball in the dirt. Did he go? Check he didn't. Did a pretty good job laying off of that breaking ball. One of the better ones Pena has thrown in the dirt right there trying to get him to chase it. Daniel able to lay off of it. Veteran reliever Joaquin Benoit joins us right now. Joaquin, uh, how did it feel out there for your inning today? It feels pretty good. I mean, uh, it's uh, still early, but uh, uh, we come in there and uh, throw and trying to do our job, you know, trying to get ready for the season. And it feels pretty good. Did you mix any breaking balls in today, Joaquin? It looked like a lot of fastballs. Well, uh, I think uh, I threw a couple core balls today. Okay. Uh, since 2004 or 5, I haven't thrown curveball, so I tried to mix that one up and see how it feels. Okay. Uh, have you had a chance to, did you look at the bullpen? Obviously, you're going to be a really big part of it, but maybe what kind of pen you guys are going to have this year? We have a lot of good guys. I mean, young guys, great arms. Uh, it feels like uh, our front office is going to be uh, going to have a tough time making decisions today, so uh, at this year in the spring, so uh, it's going to be a little bit. Uh, uh, bottle for them. So I, I think it's a uh, it's good to be in that position How about Daniel Robertson draws a 3-2 pitch ball four Walks in a run picks up an RBI. We got a tie ball game at 8-8 eight, eight. Joaquin you've been around you've been to a lot of camps. Uh, give me your thoughts on what you've seen to this point I can't complain. I mean this is the most fun uh, I've been having 
in a, in a lot of years. Uh, this uh, camp is really different. It, uh, our managers really lose. I mean, a uh, lot of us can complain about the, the way things go, t things are going. Hopefully, we can build from that. Is uh, He's been really confident in, uh, I mean, uh, you see what we, we have done this year. Uh, Montero with a base hit to right. Two runs are going to score. Runner going to third. He's in safely. That's Robertson. Jesus Montero. A two-run single. The Mariners have taken a lead. I, you got to hear it there with Joaquin, but Montero had, just had two good at-bats. Well, I guess I should have come earlier. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, Joaquin, thanks for your time, man. Good to have you aboard. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. You bet. A couple of base hits for Montero. Yes, sir. About the at-bat by Robertson. Boy, he took a couple of close pitches. Worked out well. He motored to third. Here's Navarro trying to get some as well. We were talking about the, the pitching not being particularly sharp early in spring. Guys are trying to figure things out, and we've seen that the last few games. Starting to see more runs being scored because of it. Fastball for strike. Navarro grounded out the first, his previous at bat. It's in ball, throw him out for the Mariners. Put three up on the board, take a 10 8 lead to the top of the ninth inning here in Peoria against the Chicago Cubs. Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines. Presented by Delta Airlines. Looking good right now. Mariners with three in the bottom of the eighth. They lead 10-8, heading to the ninth. And here's a look at the next three broadcasts right here on Root Sports. Saturday, 6.30, a split squad faces the Dodgers on our air. Sunday, the Reds come to Peoria. Then on Monday, Felix will be making his Cactus League debut against the Rockies. For a complete schedule this spring, visit RootSports.com. This one will be game two of our spring training telecasts. Mariners 1-0 on TV, looking to make it. 2-0 on a beautiful day in Peoria, guys. All right, Brad, thank you. They bring in Blake Parker, former Cub, to be making his third spring appearance. And Blake Parker with a chance to close it out against his former team. He was with the Cubs in 12, 13, and 14, part-time duty. He's with Iowa last year, AAA, three games, zero and zero record, a 2-7-0 ERA. 30 years old at a Fayetteville, Arkansas, 6'3, 225. Well, he's going to get the opportunity to get pick up a save. This oh. most of last year he had to have surgery to remove loose bodies in his right elbow in mid June. He played in the Winter League in Mexico. 
good spot for him. It looks like it's, it's set up nice. Scott Service set this up nicely. Hey, closing it your old team. What the heck? Why not? Here's Perez to lead it off. Ten to Zanino's glove, on two. Three, three call. Oh, went right after. It. Impressive. Couple of well located fastballs. Mariner Finn right now has got the upper hand over the Cub fan. <laughs> Blake Parker, his okay. third strikeout of the spring. The junior t shirt on. Look forward to. Hopefully we'll see the Hall, the Hall of Famer here in spring training. Obviously we'll see him in the number retirement ceremony. Oh, and one to count. Jesus Montero, his last two at bats. Nice work. Base hit to left and then a two run single to left in the eighth inning. We talked a lot about the competition at first base. The guys, the right handed hitters, anyways, be over there with Adam Lind and he helped himself out today. One and two, the count. Jason Vossler. One hop right to Montero. Two outs. One more, let's go, one more. Brings up John Andrioli. Walking a ground at 0 for 1. Parker's seventh pitcher today. Next telecast, James Paxton will get the start against the Dodgers, 6.30 Seattle time, Saturday night. Seeing Parker out there with his beard and, and his delivery to home, he reminds me a lot of Jeff Reardon. Remember Jeff good Reardon? Good call. Very good call. Great, <laughs> great years with Montreal and the Mets. Yep. Giants too, right? Can you play with the Giants a little bit? Uh, I think the Braves maybe. Bra yeah, all right. Let me look that up. Good call, Jeff Reardon. Yeah, yeah, he's a good one. Yeah, good closer. Yeah, very, very similar. Oh, you know, his wind up and everything, very similar in addition to having a physical. Yeah. You know, resemblance. Same length of beard. Same stride. Jeffrey, Minnesota. What am I talking about? I yeah. forgot about that. Mets, Montreal, Minnesota, Boston, Atlanta, Cincy, and the Yankees. Had a good career. 16 years in the big leagues. 367 saves. Here's the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Mike Parker closes out a win for the Mariners against his old team. 
10 8 final as the Cubs lose for the seventh consecutive time. They are now 1 and 8. The Mariners go to 5 and 4 on the spring. Here's your final score Mariners spring training presented by Delta Airlines, and we'll be with you again on Saturday. Good win today, it, Mount Terrell and company. It, it was. It was good to see Miley out there again uh, today. I, I thought he threw the ball pretty well. He talked about it earlier, struggling a little bit pitching inside some of the right handers, but overall, you have to like what you see. And Jesus Montero, we've talked a lot about what's happening over at first base. He helped himself with a couple of hits and some RBIs today, but the Mariners, good at bats, up and down the lineup. 15 hits, 10 runs, you'll take it. Absolutely. Final score. Mariners 10, Cubs 8 for Mike Flowers. I'm Dave Sims and our entire crew. Talk to you on Saturday night, 6 30, Seattle time. Mariner baseball will be coming your way from the Peoria Sports Complex. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody.